Let's dig into this because this is part two of a series that was probably the most controversial um, that I've ever done. And it's because I said that the 55 gallon rain barrels are too small. So the reason I said that is because they are. And so the thing is, in an average week, a gardener uses six and a half thousand gallons of water, okay? And, and then a farmer uses over 8,000 a week. So even my little 500 gallon, you know, tank here, that is better than nothing. Uh, and it doesn't have a first flush diverter, which is a best practice, but I got it into place right as the end of the rain season arrived. And it was literally only two rains. And as you can see, I mean, there's spigots like all every 40 feet around this house. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six areas that rain gets released from this house. And one of them filled up with 500 gallons just into two light rains. So when we think about the amount of water, let's just do some math. <laughs> because, because a lot of people think that that 55 gallon barrel is gonna really do it. It's gonna save the garden. It's gonna save the day. It's gonna be more than just half the garden in one sitting. But the reality is it's very little water. And in terms of survival, uh, humans need a lot more water than that. And thing about water storage when we go big is to try to put it higher up in the landscape so that gravity works for us and if the power goes off we still can have pressurized running water all right power outages are a reality there's going to be more brownouts there's going to be planned outages this summer um, we're reaching the limits of our grids our grids and infrastructure are breaking and the demand is increasing as the heat and stressors on our systems are increasing. So when it comes to fire, wildfires are reality here. It's still spring and already they're saying that summer dryness wildfire season is upon us. So this is even more important now to us. Having this water here, having it around the house, having it at different stages and having the most amount that we can hold to last us as long as possible throughout the season. Keep in mind, this is 2,500, 3,000 gallons in that range. And down there, that was 500 gallons. And after two rainstorms, I got 500 gallons off of one sixth of the roof catchment. So, so we're talking about a lot of rain comes in and if we can just store enough water in here and the landscape and have soils that can hold water instead of being hydrophobic like most california soils naturally are in this degraded situation that we've created california's oxidized um, and alkaline soils are really exaggeratedly so not native um, and not natural because uh, water holding capacity was once much greater before they carved these logging uh, roads, before they carved these logging, uh, gullying earthworks that allowed for them to, to, to channel the logs down the mountain in the rainy season easier. And then you have all of this damage now that 50, 60, 100 years later, that is just all the water has been designed to just go straight down and all directed into the, the, the stream path. So a lot of earthworks need to be redone everywhere because the landscape though, you know, they're like, it's national forest, it's this and that. It's actually been, been redesigned already multiple times. So none of, this is the most altered hydrological landscape in the world. Brock Dolman told me that a few years ago. And it's absolutely true. I mean, he's got the PhD and he's the water expert, you know, so he really can dial it in. But we are living in a total failed, like Frankenstein-like water system where the blood is taken out here and put on the surface here and then flushed out here. And it's all going to the cities or ag and it's being primarily wasted. 
So we could have agriculture that conserves water, that uses water more wisely. We could have a lot of different things, but the reality is, is we are not managing our water properly. We're not rehydrating our landscapes. We're pulling the water out from above the foothills. So we wonder why the foothills are burning. They removed all the foothills water. The natural water that belongs in that landscape has been systematically removed, run down through pipes where turbines were, and then the electricity generated from that was sold back to the people. So not only are they destroying the habitat, causing the wildfires, but they're making the people pay for it. Whew, it's awful. So this is why storing our own water is so important because the landscape itself has been designed for failure, has been designed to burn. And it's a pyrophytic landscape, right? And so it should be able to handle these like low, uh, low burning fires, these cooler fires that the, the indigenous peoples, the Indians, the American Indians that lived up and down. I know we say Native Americans, but that could be anywhere in North and South America. So American Indians is actually, I've learned, is what many of them prefer because it's actually the legal term uh, for who they are legally. And so... I really want to, to honor and respect that they understood how this all worked. They understood how to keep the landscape healthy. The char that was created, that char holds water three times its mass. So incredible capacity. This whole idea of charring the landscape, of, of doing these light burns, incredibly important for this landscape, incredibly important for the soil, incredibly important for the hydrological cycle. So I know that's a tangent, but these all go into the thinking behind the water system that we have, why we're so concerned about water, why, you know, I'm counting, right? Right, so this, if it is 2,500, that's 500, that's 3,000 right now. Let's go up top and see how much more because uh, reality, you know, is, is, <laughs> is what it is. All right, we're here at the top of the mountain. This is where all the water storage really is. And again, when we do that math, we see how the roof gets tons more water all the time, but it's hard to store it all. And it's the same thing here, right? So we've got potentially 3,000, we've got 2,500, adding that all together with down below, that's at eight to eight and a half thousand gallons. That's an average week for a farmer on a quarter of an acre. Hmm. So we see very quickly and obviously they're not doing permaculture and they're not doing biochar and there's all these little things that we can do to stretch that water. But there's a severe limitation here. And this is all of California is kind of seeing this now that, you know, reservoirs are at 50% and we're getting the dryness of the wildfire season now, as opposed to the end of summer. So this is my main water. This is my backup water. Actually, I actually shut this off um, once they're full. Uh, and then we just pull off of this one and the down, one down below. Now, the idea behind this is that we store the water in the highest point of the land so that gravity, if there's no power, gravity, despite there being no pumping, obviously we want to put this all on solar pumps and do everything we can to get this off grid. That's been discussed but we're, we're doing things as we can when we can. <laughs> We've got spaces over here. We could expand this. We could get the 10,000, the 5,000 gallon tank, and we could have, you know, three weeks to a month's worth of water here for, you know, like a big garden of plants or for some animals up here to help us fix this area like those goats were helping us. But the reality is water scarcity is a limitation that many of us have to deal with. And the more water that we can store, the better. The important thing to understand is how much water you get and how much water you need. Because the reality is our water budget will determine the vitality of our system, will determine the survivability in a catastrophe. It's incredibly important. So it's no joking matter that we need more and more water storage. All of us do. And even if you're in an area where you're like, oh, we get rains, I don't worry about water. You know, having water storage is smart because as we've seen, the unexpected happens when it comes to climate and weather. Whether you're in Texas, 
or you're in California, Oregon, New England, we're seeing climate weirding and uh, we got to have some safety. You know, we got to have some protection on our site. And that's what water storage gives us. That's what storing it high in the landscape gives us. And that's what capturing rainwater off of our roof uh, gets us. So it's important to understand, to do the math and understand what it is that we need to protect ourselves for our families and for our future. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And store water. <laughs> Everywhere. In the landscape, in water storage, in lakes, in rivers, in ponds. We have to start storing water on the land to change the pH, to bring back the stability, to heal the world. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.